Hello, everybody. I've been waiting forever to do this movie. Peter Pan Return to Neverland. Celebrate the 20th anniversary. I'm going to review this movie. To make this one plain and simple, that the story is kind of the same as the almost the same as the first movie that Peter Pan has defeated Captain Hook and return and Wendy back home to London and waited many years to come and cheer he has grandchildren has a granddaughter named Jane and a little boy named John hmm? And we see her being a young little daughter, looking at their... Yep, this takes place in probably in the 1950s, where all children were forced to go on board to go to a place that's uh, they're safe. And there's the same dog, but called Nana 2, which is based off the same dog from the first film. So, let's make this one plain and simple. Well, Jane is kind of like almost like a stick of mud kind of person that doesn't want to have fun like she used to. Believe in fairy tales, you know, nonsense. But Wendy and Jora and Darling does believe that Peter Pan does exist, that he tells a story to Jane's little brother believe that he does exist and that they find a treasure and take away from Ken the Hook's clutches and start a big fight and whoever shows up is is none other than everybody's favorite character Tinker Bell and he's just picking dust to sprinkle over Ken the Hook's hip make their heroic escape This movie story is pretty simple. Because when the soldiers show up, and they have no choice but to send the children bring her own daughter. It's country. They were it safe. But she refuses. And will just stay home like her father. Or told her to do. Yeah, Danielle. I does believe that Pia Pen does exist, but she doesn't believe them. She refuses to listen. And to make sure I don't get copyrighted. And it does have that song called I'll Try. It's one of the saddest parts in movie history. Captain Hogan is getting a pirate's kidnap. And Jane. And mistaken her as Wendy. And they go off to Neverland. And planning. And a bait. And to catch her Peter Pan and summon the beast. That's not the TikTok crocodile from the last film, um, but the octopus. Our hero, Peter Pan, and saves her just in time. Well, the Mook has the problems of his own. I'm going to by the octopus. Also, I love the band of animation where Peter Pan meets Jane for the first time. Wendy's own daughter. And I gotta admit, this bit of animation looks adorable. And she cannot believe her eyes that he's real, and so is Tinkerbell. They have fun in Neverland. It's amazing, isn't it?
team meet for Lost Boys. It's for the first time. But she can't tell a story. And she reminds some of those kids remind her of Danielle. And she wants to go back home. She refuses to stay in Neverland. And the only way she can go back home is to fly. And to believe. But she doesn't have that much childhood inside her. Oh yeah, there's like the scene that Tinkerbell doesn't like her. Because she's jealous. What's of her? So yeah, it's just like the first film. Oh, she's jealous. As of any lady she comes across, just like Wendy. She uses a bit of pixie dust. I think it'll work, but unfortunately it does not go too well. Hmm, <laughs> does have a bit of humor in it. Captain Hook overhears this, that she wants to go home and gives him a brilliant evil idea. After a bit of slapstick humor in here and there, a bit of the notebook. Also, that did not happen in the first film. Um, definitely did not believe in fairies. Tinkerbell gets weaker. And I gotta admit, this movie did make me feel sorry for her, even though she's kind of mean. I do know she misses her father. And she feels left out. So, she had no choice. And I love the bit where Peter Pan and explains that don't believe even fair is her light will go out. While that's happening, she encounters Kedem Hook. And he wants to make sure he catches Peter Pan once and for all and trick and Jane. And she tells him had the promise not harm a single hair on Peter Pan's head. He, he tried to make sure he doesn't break a promise. It's kind of sad when I see Tigger Bell getting weaker and she doesn't believe in fairies. There's also a scene, or like a song, on which I will not play, because they'll be like almost copyrighted. And she can be one of the lost boys, or should I say a lost girl. Oh, so she can believe in fairies. She was about to play, blow the whistle, but unfortunately she doesn't want to do that. I just flip this over. I like how this one has the back of the cover saying more magic, more adventure, more pixie dust. Well, this means it's a classic and this pixie powered special edition of Peter Pan and Turn to Neverland that filled with wonder, imagination, and even more pixie dust. Join Tinkerbell, Peter Pan, blah, blah, blah. And much more. You could pause the video and you see the whole entire world. They find a treasure. Unfortunately, one of the lost boys got too curious for his own good and playing the whistle and thinking Jane's a traitor and kidnapped Peter Pan. And she heads back home in the Peter's own hut. And I gotta admit, this is one of the saddest. Moments in movie history. I'll just show you one more thing. The Death of Tinkerbell. 
Like, I mean, it's the saddest part in Disney history that we see Tinkerbell died. That she didn't believe in fairies. But luckily, since there are tears, she comes back to life. And it's up to her to save Peter Pan. And it's in trouble. And to not to show too much of the, the film. Um, it's climax. It's downright hilarious and crazy, and it's the best part of the film. That she does believe in fairies, and she can fly. Is the coolest part in the film. The scene kept them hooked was a hilarious way possible. And get to the point, he does succeed going back home, and now she believes in fairy tales, just like her mother did. And to not give too much away, the ending was totally worth it, watching the whole film. Alright, cut to the main menu. And that was Peter Pan and Turn to Neverland. Obviously, I love this movie. I'm glad I had to review this one, because it came out in 2002. Maybe this film is already 20 years old. They kind of re-update this movie on DVD in 2007. It's already like nearly... Let's see. Nearly 15 years old. I love this film. As much as I enjoyed it as a kid back then. And many children will watch this for a very long time next to the other Disney sequels. I kind of love how all the characters are practically the same as the first film. Tinkerbell so her muted self until... all well, the Tinkerbell film that she can talk. This is pretty much one of my most favorite Disney sequels out there. Or next to the Jungle Book that came out in 2003. And every a year later of the film, it's production to be in theaters. The film is only like an hour and 13 minutes. It's still totally worth your time if you love to see your beloved Disney character Peter Pan, Ginger Bell, Kip and Hook, Mr. Smee being his playful henchman self. Even not the return of TikTok crocodile, but an octopus just to make the animation better. This is one of my most favorite Disney films out there. I mean, if you're like a huge Peter Pan and fan, you might enjoy watching this movie a few more times. All I can say is this film is totally worth your time. Hey, I know that music. It's from that movie Hook from Robin Williams. Can they actually use this for this film? Sweet. Anyways, you'll really love this film as much as I have. So if you're like a huge Disney fan, this will be totally worth your money. On yeah, DVD or Blu-ray, or rent it at the library, you'll actually have a wonderful time watching this film as I did. Voice acting still perfect. So the animation is still superb, and most likely, great work of art background. You'll have a very wonderful time watching this movie over and over again, as much as I did as a kid. So, thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in my next movie review, which will not be in a very long time, so... Like the old people in Mexico says, Adios.